30, 2015, notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting is properly given by transmission to the Star Ledger, the Independent, and the Turbo Times, and by posting at the Middletown Township Municipal Building and filing with the Township Clerk on March 20th, 2015. Committeeman Fiore. Here. Committeeman Sharpenberg. Here. Committeeman Sinabrina. Here. Deputy Mayor Massell. Here. Mayor Murray. Here. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to honor the troops serving worldwide, defending our freedoms, constitutions, and way of life. Thank you. At this time, we're going to begin with a budget presentation by the Chief Financial Officer, Colleen Lott. Thank you. I just prepared a brief budget presentation for the highlights of the budget. This is a summary of the budget on, on the revenue side. Uh, the surplus, we're using a little bit additional this year. Our Local revenues are down some, that's to help offset that. Uh, our total miscellaneous revenues are a little over 14 million, and that is our local revenue that I already mentioned, our state aid, which is the energy receipts tax, our UCC fees, um, grants, and, and some other special items of revenue. Receipts from one fund taxes, $25,000. That amount is dictated by the amount of open taxes that we have at the end of the year. And with the accelerated tax sale, that's not normally a large amount. Um, so the general revenues total to a little bit over 19 million. Um, the balance of that to support the budget is almost 47 million, 46, 9, 64, 220. And then there's also the library um, levy, which is Three million four forty-five six forty-nine. On the appropriation side, we have appropriations within caps of fifty-four million six forty-nine four seventy. That's mostly our operational items. Outside of cap is four million four thirty-seven ninety-nine. Those are things that are allowed to be placed outside of cap, such as the library, um, our debt service. Uh, other items like that, some of them listed below, interlocal agreements, capital improvements, grants, um, deferred charges, which is uh, some of that's from Sandy, some of that are from older deferred charges, and then there's the amount for judgments for things that get settled this year. The reserve for uncollected taxes is, is the amount that you budget um, to cover in case we do have any taxes unpaid at the end of the year. That amount is to cover the amount that is not collected by the end of the year. This is a pie chart that basically breaks down the different pieces of the budget um, by some different cost centers, salary and wages, insurance, operating expenses, debt service, and pensions and retirements, as you can see, take up a good portion of the budget. Um, then there's things like utilities and the library, and again, the deferred charges that were already mentioned um, that you know fill in the, the rest of the budget. This is the tax levies from last year, since they're not struck yet this year. Do a breakdown, we'll show you how they were broken down last year. This is basically a dollar on the tax. Every dollar that you pay, 62% of it goes to the school board, 22 stays on the municipal level, 13 goes to the county, and then 1% each for the library, the open space, and the county open space. Um, these are changes in the property taxes from what was the final for 2014 and what we're proposing for 2015. Our assessed values, I just want to take a second and talk about, because Monmouth County is in the pilot assessment program, um, each town in Monmouth County gets assessed up to what's considered 100% of market value each year. 
so as you can see, there was a pretty significant change in our assessed values from 2014 to 2015. That 2015 number right now is a preliminary number until the county is done with tax appeals at the county level, which will be sometime in April. That number won't be finalized by the county, but it shouldn't change very significantly um, from, from what it is in, in the preliminary, which is given to us in January. Um, our total budget this year is down a little under a million dollars. Um, we, we, we were down in revenues, so therefore we tried to offset in appropriations to make the tax impact not as great. Um, so we, we worked with our department heads. We, you know, we did a lot of cutting and, um, you know, tried to keep things as, as low as we possibly could. It still resulted in a levy increase of a little under 1%. Um, the, the, the net revenues that we were down were about 1.5 million. So that, that levy is the difference between, you know, the revenues that were down and, and you know, the, the budget. We tried to come down as, as much as we could, but we had to make up the difference there. The tax rate is something else I want to talk about. The tax rate itself, I'm going by what was the certified rate last year. Um, this year it's down, but again it's down because of the assessed values. Um, so that's a little bit <clears throat> of a difference in that it does come down, but it comes down based on the assessed values. So although the levy is going up, the rate itself comes down. This is really the important part is on the average homeowner. The average home, because of the assessed values going to 100% of market value, you can see that last year it was 375.6, this year it's 396.3. Um, the annual amount for municipal services last year was 1,087, this year 1,805, an annual difference of $18.81 on the average homeowner for the year for municipal services monthly a dollar fifty seven for municipal services. Um, this is the tax levy increases from 2010 through the proposed of 2015. 2010 was a year where there had to be a significant increase due to some financial issues that the township was going through. But as you can see since then those increases have come down greatly. And this year is the lowest that you've had in the past five years. Um, the one thing I added this year was the energy receipts tax. Um, this goes back to 2001 when we were receiving what we should have. The gray line is what we should receive. The green line is what we have received. And this year, you can see, I just put the amounts in for this year alone. If we were receiving what we should from the state, it would be over $5 million more in energy receipts tax. Or if we received what we were getting in 2008, it would right. still be $2 million. Right, exactly. So in one year, $5 million? Huh? Yes. Because that grows according we to... We debated putting this one in there because you knew how Tony was going to react. <laughs> <laughs> It grows each year based. Drop the mic, so. Yeah, I, I mean it's you know it's just. I think we all know it's it's not something that's going to change anytime soon. But I also agree with Tony is that even if we could get back to the level that we were once at, it would make such a big difference to our taxpayers. And that, you know, it's it's big difference. right. It's two million dollars. I mean that's that's four percent tax cut. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. Um. So that's. That's the end of the slideshow. Obviously, if you have questions, I, you know, I just I wanted to keep it simple and, and you know highlight the the main factors, um, which I think is that the levy is only up, you know, a little under one percent, and you know, and then again with the values going up, that's good for everybody in town. We we'll always so. do five years, right? Um, okay, so I'll start. The UCC fees year over year, what were the UCC fees in 2014 versus 2015? In 2014 versus 2015. 
What we're anticipating is this year we're anticipating 1,560,000. Last year we anticipated 1,400,000. Right. Well, we collected 1,700,000 last year, but that was over what we anticipated. Each year, you know, it, it's it. They've had good years, so we bump it up a little bit, but we always go conservative. Just you know, to make sure that we don't overestimate what we're going to bring in. So the decrease in revenue comes from where? Court revenues are down. Um, the uh, the parking permits because of... The right. Station. So right. We lowered the fees. Right. We lowered the fees, so therefore, you know, that revenue will come down. Um, interest and costs and taxes are down. The, oh, I actually have a little cheat sheet that I don't have to put through. Uh, court parking permit pilot, we have an anomaly with one pilot this year that we took a significant hit. That'll, that'll rebound next year. Um, capital surplus, you know, that's something we can all from capital to offset some of those purchases. That's down this year. We sold a property last year that we don't have this year. And delinquent taxes are down, like I said, because that's dictated by how much we have open at the end of the previous year. So, if one of the cost drivers, as I saw for a little bit, has been snow removal, mm -hmm. um, obviously health care and other major mm -hmm. cost drivers, but if snow removal was at budgeted amount, we'd be looking at it as a budget. Right. I mean, snow removal. Prior to 15 and 14, you were somewhere under half a million dollars. It's because they changed it. It's <laughs> because I said it. And then this year we're at close to 1.3 million. So it's you know it's it's a 800,000. Right. That's a two percent. Right. That's a big big increase. You guys did a great job. I commend you for a budget that's the lowest in years, despite the challenge. <laughs> Colleen, uh, reimbursements for green acres from the state, where are we with that? Are we getting any reimbursements this year? Because they had the, uh, uh, the referendum last year, uh, what was going to replenish that fund. And, you know, in that case, we would see more reimbursements or, you know, a higher reimbursement, I guess. The, the green acres money, we got some in for one property last year. Mm -hmm. Um, before Jason left, he and I had been discussing that. He was not certain about, you know, the referendum having an impact on some of the older amounts that we got out there, but he was going to try and work on that to get it reimbursed. So I'm assuming that, you know, once we have someone in his spot, that that's something that we'll work on. Um, that will help the open space fund uh, to offset the cost of those acquisitions that, that are still hanging out there. But there's still a significant amount. Of, off the top of my head, I want to say there's about $900,000 due from Green Acres on open space purchases that were done. Just the payments that's due, not the total number. That's <coughs> right. Just what's due to us. Right. Yeah. It's significant. It's probably more than that. Yeah. And I'd say it's probably 50-50 that we'll get anything this year. I haven't heard about any municipalities right. so far. How That's how Jason do? felt. He didn't yeah. know that that was going to have any kind I of... I don't think they're going to have their act together by the end of the year, but mm -hmm. possible. I think the change was the first of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, so theoretically, the revenue that's coming in should be going into the open space fund. You know, or the green acres fund. Yeah, I don't know that where they're at with the processing of requests at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah, but they're still 10 years back on some of those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous. This yeah, we I have mean, we're still one saddled from, from very old. Green Acres purchases prior to probably you being on the committee. Yeah. Wow. Thanks a lot. Anybody else? Uh, you only, uh, question. As you, as you model and, and forecast 
through, you know, obviously future budgets. You um, are there anything outside of health care costs, which since the advent of Obamacare continues to rise at along the levels here? Um, do you anticipate any other hurdles in this budget or things that going forward with this budget utilize that next year's you know would be alarming to you or well I think you know there's certainly some revenues that we have to keep our eye on to see you know what their longevity is and whether we think they'll stay at the levels they are and if not you know what we'll do to try and you know mitigate any impact um, the other thing is you know we're currently in contract negotiations with all of our units and that can have um, you know I think that could actually have somewhat of a positive effect meaning that you know we're trying to get some you know some changes that would help us and um, then you know the other thing is the, the pension costs in that um, you know obviously that's you know a topic that's been talked about a lot in the public and uh, the local pensions paid for by the, the, the local taxpayers are fiscally in good shape. But some of the proposals out there would marry the state and the local together. And that, we don't want that. could scary. have a, a very significant impact. Um, and some of the talk even about, you know, health care reform and taking savings from a local level and applying it towards, you know, the state unfunded pension that that's something that I'm keeping my eye on and that has me nervous because if that goes through, that's going to have a significant impact on us. Anybody else? Before we go, I'll just say that you did a fantastic job. Everybody did. And I think it was great the way you were prepped before tonight. Uh, so pretty much all of our questions were answered at some point. It really, you know, it was a great process for us. One of the best I've been involved in, since I am the old guy on the committee. It's also a couple other two percent, it's not going to make much. Well, I think one of the things we, we recognize, and one, one of the reasons we struggled so hard to get this as low as we did, is we know that we know it's coming with schools. We know the public's going to be facing some increases that we can't control, but it's a reality that they're going to be facing them. So. You know, we could have chimed in and said, well, we'll go for a larger increase, too, because, well, everyone else is. But, you know, that was unfair to the taxpayer. We decided to try to... The referendum hits this kind of... Yeah, that, that's what's going to happen. And the county may be looking at an increase, too, based on what was in the paper over the weekend. So, based on those two things, it was even more important that we keep ours ratcheted as low as possible mm -hmm. because, um, you know, people are, people are hurt. Good job. We have known action items for tonight's meeting. We have first have resolution 15-131. It's we moved it up on the agenda to make it before the vote on the introduction of the budget. And it's a resolution authorizing First Amendment to the lease agreement for certain property within block 682, lot 4, as shown on the tax map of the Township of Middletown, known as the Croydon Hall School Building and adjacent facilities owned by the Township of Middletown not currently required for public purposes pursuant to NJSA 48-12-14C to the Trinity Hall Corporation for a not-for-profit educational institution. Commandment Fiore. Yes. Commandment Scharfenberger. Yes. Commandment Senorino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Massell. Yes. Mayor Murray. Yes. yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 15-131. At this time, we have introduction of resolution 15-129, the 2015 municipal budget resolution for introduction. Um, Commandment Fiore. Yes. Commandment Scharfenberger. Yes. Commandment Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Massell. Yes. Mayor Murray. Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 15-129 with the public hearing to determine and advertise the well, later date. At this time we have resolution 130 15-130, uh, 2015 solid waste budget resolution for introduction. Second. Commandment Fury. 
Yes. Mayor McCharthy murder. Yes. Mayor Minnesota Brino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Massell. Yes. Mayor Murray. Yes. yes. <laughs> motion carries to adopt resolution 15-130. This time we have township committee comments. We will go with committee meetings at the first. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Thank you. The comments of uh, Committee Mullen and Sharpenberg and uh, Fury, Commander of Administration, CFO, and a budget introduction at less than 1%. Um, as we know, the budget and the tax oh, right, hurry up. cap is moving in the right direction. The, uh, the assessments are on the rise, and continue to be on the rise, at a 5% increase this year, and to hold the uh, tax increase, uh, the levy increase to less than 1% is, is, uh, is uh, excellent continuation of uh, the administration, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go with Commitment Field. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as I said briefly, again, I commend the uh, administration and CFO from, uh, and all staff for coming up with a uh, budget that uh, not only fully conforms to the 2% cap levy, uh, but also uh, exceeds it despite the challenges that we may have today. Healthcare and other declining revenues and snow. So, uh, you know, I, I commend uh, everyone for doing a, such a great job and doing as much as they can to uh, to trim uh, the introduced budget as much as humanly possible. And uh, you know, as the administrator said, uh, being mindful of, of other potential increases that could happen with respect to. Uh, to other uh, budgets and organizations that come through tax bills like schools and county. Um, one of the things that was also known in the presentation is that the tax levy does not go up, obviously, because the uh, values go up. So as you see, the tax levies went down. So I think that's a point that um, should not be lost you know, in this uh, this budget cycle, because I think it's easy to people to say, oh, my value went up, so my taxes go up. And obviously, you see that that rate uh, does not uh, actually goes down based on assessed value or something. We know that, but sometimes it's uh, an education process that, uh, that needs to happen. And, you know, finally, I I've said this for, so I've been mayor in 2011, I've said it in 11, I've said it in 12, I've said it in 13, I've said it in 14, I'll say it in 15. We are not going to be able to provide tax cuts. We are unfortunately unable to get to that magic zero number with things out of our control until we start to get the uh, still Trenton gives their you know releases their grip on municipal services and, and I don't I don't care if it's the assembly it's the Senate it's the governor I don't care whose fault it is but the energy receipts taxes and other things that are just continue state aid which is the biggest uh, in my opinion um, charade in state history until so, you know that that the, the state can, you know gets their house in order and stops hamstringing municipalities and sending everything downhill so they can run balanced budgets and we can raise taxes, you're not going to be able to do what we all strive to do. And it's just a reality, and it's an unfortunate reality. And you talk about property taxes in the state of New Jersey. You know, I'm not looking to pass the blame, but you know, give me our 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 fair due that this municipality is even was given back in 2008, and you'd have a three percent tax cut this year. Give us what we're owed in normal and you'd have tax cuts and a lot of better roads and fire trucks and everything else in the state of New Jersey. So, you know, until Trenton gets their act together, they're going to continue to, to choke the, the municipalities. And I will do everything I possibly can to support any resolution to, to obviously not have the municipalities, which have a fully funded pension plan, merge with the state's pension plan. Because all that's going to do is create the municipalities, the taxpayers at a local level to fund a broken state plan and increase your property taxes so everybody in Trenton can look good that they didn't raise your taxes. Not going to work. I said I would never support it, anything, any legislation that's out there on the plan. So great job otherwise. Don't want to be negative on a, a very positive budget. So thank you. Yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, I think I, I said it all before. Uh, great job. And you see some of the towns that have Pass their preliminary budgets introduced. Uh, you see, we're in a lot better shape having the weather, the same sort of issues, you know, snow, sandy. So, it's a great job all around. There's nothing else I can add to that. Thanks. Yeah, uh, just echoing that, um, phenomenal job for our administrator, administration, and our CFO. Um, you know, our job is being on the committee and have 
fiscal responsibility. You know, you help achieve that. It's not easy to do. Um, we've been here, with, we've had much, you know, a lot of challenges, and um, you know, we know what it's like to have a tough budget. We've had a perfect storm, as we've said in the past. Um, you know, we, we, we saw challenges, but we were able to do it. So, thank you. Great job. I'm just going to um, be very brief because I'm under the weather, but I echo everything that uh, my colleagues have said today. And, um, I think this budget, once again, reflects our commitment um, to keeping taxes in check and as low as possible. Um, so, that being said, fantastic job. I'm not surprised. And uh, thank you very much. So, with that, I think we're going to move on to public comments. Does anybody have any public comments? Do you know members of the public wishing to make any remarks and move to close public portion and move into exec? Sir. <coughs> yes. Committee Man Charles Berger. Yes. Committee Man Senaprino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marcel. Yes. Mayor Murray. Yes. This time I'll read the resolution as to executive session. Where is open public meetings? Act provides that the Township Committee may go through the executive session to discuss matters that may be confidential, listed pursuant to NJSA 10.4 12. Word is recommended by the Township Attorney and Administrator that the committee go to executive session to discuss matters set forth here and after, which are permissible for discussion in executive session. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Township Committee of the Township Middletown the Committee which are going to executive session to discuss the following items. Only one item tonight contractual negotiations for to NJSA 10.4-12 B4 regarding the proposed supportive housing project request with an anticipated time of decision of May 2015. No action being taken on this uh, public this evening. Motion carried. Move to executive session. 